It's January 22nd, 2015. I'm Dana Durmfurt, uh, nuclearproctologist.org. And you can find these videos at Beautiful Girl Boy Dana on YouTube. And this was a week ago. I'm sitting on the boat right now at the wharf in Prince Rupert, British Columbia. And I'd like to hit a couple of headlines for everybody we're waiting for the weather to come back down it looks like the next uh, day is lost but then it's going to be seven eight days of really good weather and so we're going to get the data from the bottom of banks island or Bull island it's about 100 nautical miles uh, one way trip and then back again and it should take me seven eight days to go down that coastline but the latest headlines e and e news it's like a scene from a horror movie, and we're seeing all sorts of mysteries. There is no food for anything on the coastline, and we have documented that at the nuclear proctologist. The latest headline was, government says diseased sea urchins with the insides are empty and bare skeletons. And birds dying of unusual cancers, and that's today's headline at e, e News, to manage to find a bit of news in the last couple of days and so that's pretty cool because they're pretty tight about Fukushima in the media so it's hard to, to aggregate it if it's not there and an old sunken barge they were also on a reef and February over well, almost a year ago 2014 dull flattened spines and lost spines and they got a little picture down there now government has a the TEPCO which is the government themselves the government owns the most shares of TEPCO and the government calls all the shots and blah 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 so it's the government of Japan now it's going to dump the radioactive elements into the ocean and they're claiming there's only 1200 radionuclides and there's actually a couple of thousand that we know about and thousands we don't that are classified and only 62 can be reduced but not eliminated they can reduce it a little bit so if they take one of the elements out of a liter of water they reduced it doesn't mean they got all the elements of that particular type or any other type out it just mean they reduced it by an element that's all they can do. They can't do it at any other nuclear site on the planet. How can TEPCO do it? What are they, magic? They ain't showed us any magic. And they plan to reduce the level of radioactive material in water. And like I said, I gotta just take a, a spoonful of water out and you reduce the radioactive level of the water. So they can lie all they want, they can misrepresent all they want, and there's nobody to call them out on the US. And so that's why we're here to call them out. And anybody's not familiar with Japan might want to consider New York Times the worst case scenario is underway intense contamination is going into that ocean uh, that's the reality of it the ocean uh, state of emergency New York Times again you can see down here uh, Japan is lost the government is utterly lost and they won't let international help in but people are calling for it that doesn't mean that it's going to happen the ocean is already contaminated and we'll stop eating fish and I got a hard time because I hurt myself a week and a half ago but we're coming along see seem at a thousand percent normal levels at a thousand percent normal, there is no normal man-made ionized radiated levels. They're man-made. Man created them. There's nothing normal about it. And so normal, they don't tell you what that is, they just say it's a thousand percent normal. It's disgusting. Our system is completely disgusting. If you got family members or friends or relatives that work for the government, you should turn your back on them. Just completely tell them why say you're a government employee and all you do is lie all you do is make stuff up and all you do is murder the population all populations of species and humans on this planet it's all the government does they got no purpose whatsoever they've totally lost their way 
Authority on the U.S. West Coast concerned with Fukushima. No, no kidding. Radioactive water pouring out every day? Go away. You're kidding. Really? When did you figure all that out? Let's go back to the ocean for a second. Contaminated food chains. Of course it is. More pollution. Study impact strength of cesium. Well, there's 100 times more strontium. It's 4%. It'll be a lot higher than that because you won't tell the truth. You won't even give the world a chance. All you can do is come out and talk about cesium-137 and there's 100... What was it? They're claiming there's 1,200 radionuclides. What? There we go. 1,200 radionuclides. And only 62 can be reduced once again. You can't reduce it. You can't reduce it. The effort is wasted. Whatever they're doing, trying to reduce it. Because that's the game. Say they're going to reduce it and then that's okay. Now we're going to release it because we reduced it as much as we could. No. Your charters say it's going to be locked up in the containment and never be exposed to the environment. You breached your charter and you need to be hung by a tree or in a tree. You are scum. All of you people are scum. Utter scum. The ocean is destroyed and all you can think about is your precious status in the community. But you have no status in the community. There's a uh, release model based upon a single react reactor, reactor, reactor's release from Unit 1. And this is just where it starts to head out from Fukushima. And so this is just a short model that the government put out. And look at the colors they're using. And so that's the government's model. And it doesn't tell you much. It doesn't show you the long-term dispersal. This model shows you dispersal and let me see, it doesn't tell us what the elements are, I can't remember. Most likely just cesium and iodine, it's based upon a single release from a single reactor. It's not based upon a constant release from that reactor or from the fuel pools that are missing at the unit one reactor. Or, or the ongoing constant releases from the other reactors or the fuel pools or the detonations. It's just based upon a couple of days releases. Just a couple of days releases. That's all. And a couple of elements. And the elements 137, cesium, is 100 times more strontium. And they base it up on iodine, but there's iodine 132 10 times more. That's worse than 131. And there's iodine 133 worse than iodine 131, 30 times more. And 31 times more iodine 129 with a 15 million year half life. And so it's utter lies and fabrications, misrepresentations till the end of time. And the transport of the radio, radiation contains contaminants below, you know, a thousand feet is slow. Now, the model, once again, it's 137, of CC 137, second year to the eighth year. Well, that's a single plume. What about plumes every day, all day, constantly, non-stop, perpetually hemorrhaging into the Pacific Ocean? How come that's not in the model? Why ain't you being hung by your students? Because you got them brainwashed. But they will hang you in the future. They will want to hang you, that's for sure, and you cannot blame them. You are scum. You people are real scum. You don't put, once again, here's another one. Let me see. And this one too is um, cesium-137 at 1.5 and 3 years and 4 years. So why ain't they using, and this is just a single release from a single reactor at Fukushima. It's not the ongoing release, it's the constant release, it's not the fuel pulls, not all the elements, it's just a single element. And people say there's nothing to worry about, the government got everything under control, they got zero under control. That's why we have terrorist laws, that's why we have nuclear waste sites, because this stuff is so dangerous. They can't have anything under control, because it's melted reactors, they haven't got Chernobyl under control. 
And it's going to be windy here tonight on the boat. It was a rough one last night, the night before. Heavy rains. I got flooded. Pure misery. It's just pure misery this entire trip. Living in utter misery. But I gladly do it. Cesium is likely to return to Japan in 20 to 30 years. Likely to return to Japan. And just 100 times more strontium. But see, this even this is only based up on a single release from a single reactor for a couple of days. It's not the ongoing, constant, endless perpetual motion machine that it is. Getting a little loud there, getting a little upset. Cracked floors and the reactors are leaking into the groundwater. They flood the whole site, it rises up and it mingles and mixes and meanders its way back down into the ocean. Or hemorrhaging, you know, from all the buildings. The buildings are on mushy land, the liquefaction. Fukushima Ocean Plume hit Canada six months ago. Think about the headlines, you know, December 20th, 2013, six months ago. No, the plumes hit Canada right away. They hit Canada and America right away, right away. Right away, way, way. Jet streams are real. I know this is hard to wrap your mind around it, but British Columbia, evidence of sharp features in the Fukushima plume over southwestern British Columbia. The plume hit there. Where's the date on this stuff? March the 20th, 2011, a few days later. These are all the, the units. Health Canada monitoring units. 15 minutes. And that's the plume. Sharp features. The plume. And the plume from Fukushima. The Fukushima plume provided a nice opportunity to test radioactive detection capabilities. The study focused on the arrival of the plume. That was uh, seven days after. Where's that last headline we were on? No, not that one. And that's Jay Cullen. I haven't got the rest of it there, but that was Jay Cullen saying that. Government report, ocean plume hits Canada six months ago. Yeah, well, let me show you another one. The ocean currents are also able to be filled up with disposition from the jet streams. And so it might have took uh, 45 days to cross the water, but the jet streams done it in a couple. And Health Canada, like I just showed you, when I found it. And so this stuff fell down into the ocean, and that plume was hitting the coastline. But that plume never stopped coming at it. It's still coming at it. And they're only basing this model up on two days, or three days, whatever it is, from Unit 1 at Fukushima. They're not basing it up on the ongoing constant releases from all the reactors, nor are they basing it up on the many, many elements that Fukushima... You know, the 1,200 radionuclides, they're not basing it upon those, no. They're only basing it upon uh, iodine-131 and cesium-137. 100 times more cesium, strontium is, it should be in that model, and all the other iodines, and uraniums, plutoniums, and americiums, neptunians, all the other elements should be in that model, but they're not. But here's the government alluding to it, Right? Government approves plan, and the expert says it's unsafe, impossible to remove the hundreds of radioactive materials, 1,200 radionuclides. We can't trust TEPCO. We can't, well, we can't trust Japan, is what they're saying. And of course they can't. There's no way to stop it, because we won't try. We won't put our collective together. Detailed calculations for 1,200 radionuclides, which is a couple of thousand of them, but... At least that's a realistic number. Now we're starting to get there. Now they've, you know, they've built over a thousand tanks. They're actually pouring it into the ocean constantly. That was just the bait and switch. That's all that was. It was a bait and switch. Just like that model here is a bait and switch to show you two elements, but there's 1,200 other that they admit to. How come you don't put them in a the model? How come they're not put into the conversation? How come people want to get out there and deny that they exist? 
because it's a trillion dollar a year industry and only monsters will take the side of the industry. The jet streams are actually real. I know that's hard to wrap your mind around, but this is based upon 137 again. See that up there, 137. And it's just a couple of days releases. It's all it's based upon. Again, that's all they base these models on. We need a model with the 1200 that they emit to and the ongoing constant releases from all the reactors. Right? These plumes, see, if it was just a single plume, that's what they've got here is a single plume. It's really bad, isn't it? It just never stopped coming at her. Those plumes are still coming at her the other day, tomorrow, the next day, next year, and decade, century. Because they're melted reactor coriums. The cores have melted down and they're known now as coriums. And that stuff is turning all the elements that it cannibalizes around it, like rocks and equipment and material that fall on top of it, into radioactive particles and elements because everything is made up of elements and particles. But once you ionize them through the man made process, you're creating more of these long lived radioactive nucleides and elements. And it's based upon just a small release from a single reactor, not from all the reactors. That's the problem, is it doesn't, none of the models, none of them are, are using, none of them are using anything but cesium and iodine, and they only use the, the least amount in the models that they can get away with. And there's no one to call them out. We got nobody out there we can trust. We got no one to return to in the media. Right, Japan had an earthquake very quick. A tsunami wiped out most of the coastline in that area. Hundreds of kilometers of coastline was wiped out. Not square, but hundreds of kilometers. When you square it up, it's a massive amount. Tsunami hit the nuclear power plant. All the models are based upon Unit 1. That's Unit 1. And But the models are not based upon a missing fuel pool that should be in that picture here and is missing. No, no. It's based upon a release from inside the reactor. It's not based upon a melter reactor. It's not based upon the ongoing release. It's not based upon the 1200 nucleoids. It's not based upon any kind of actual science. It's based upon something they were told to base it upon. And so they're disgusting maggots. They're parasites upon our society. They're true parasites. That's all these people are. This is Unit 2. That's not in none of the models. That's 100% meltdown. That's 100% melt through to containment. That's 100% melt out of the building into the groundwater down into the earth, ongoing, melted away. The fuel poles on the roof of it had all the old nuclear cores. Took the cores out of the reactors and put them in the roof. That caught fire and burnt off many over times over. This is Unit 3. That's not in the models I just showed you anywhere in the models. 100% destruction. Ejected the nuclear core out of the building. The fuel poles are missing. They're the reactor cores, many, many reactor cores are missing. They're the same as reactors melting down. Many, 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 many reactors melting down. This is MOX fuel. Two million times worse than any other nuclear reactor currently on this planet. This building alone is around 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. Chernobyl one third the size. Chernobyl 30%. Meltdown. Chernobyl, they still can't get inside of it. Chernobyl, they'll be putting sarcophaguses over it for the next tens of thousands of years. They can't get in it, and they can't get in Fukushima. Unit 4, look at it. It's completely destroyed, Unit 4. That building is destroyed. Look, you can see right through the roof. Yet the, and that's official pictures. The building's detonated. All four of those buildings detonated, and they're not in the models. Nor is Unit 5 and Unit 6, and I never do get around to talking about that much, but I got a lot of material on it. They weren't in cold shutdown like they claim. They sprayed salt water on the reactors, and it made these little buckyballs, urethal peroxide hydrogen buckyballs, and they ingest the radioactive elements and particles and become little nuclear engines, and they're not solubile in water. That's so important. That's why we're having all these issues, but they will stick to things like the coastline. Unit 4, once again, look at it really good. Look at the roof. This was a 10-story building. This was a huge, massive building. You can park an SUV on that right there to give you some kind of context of how big this building actually is. And they tore the roof, all that roof that you were just looking at, all of that up there, they tore it off, right? 
that's gone. That's where the fuel pool was, right? That's where the reactor core was right in here, and the fuel pools were up here. All the old cores from the reactor, all missing. Like many reactors melting down in a single building. They tore all of that top off. They built a structure. That's the homeless getting their x-rays and neutrons. Dead men walking. And they built a structure up to cross it. They're going to put a crane in it later on, but there's nothing in there. They tore the top off that building. And you can see what's left of the building. Look, still open down that side of it. Look at it. It's still destroyed down that side, right? And they, they can't get in. They can't get inside of Chernobyl. And then all the media came out and showed you the picture to the left. Right? BBC and all those people. And this is what they say the inside of that destroyed building looks like. They tore the roof off it. That's where the reactor core and the fuel pools were. But yet, they're showing you this picture here. Look, RT. Never ask no questions. Say, Fukushima, Unit 4. They're doing the most dangerous job imaginable. Look, <laughs> if it looked like inside of that building, right, the building on your, on your right, is number four. The building on your left, they claim, is number four. And let me come back. So if it looked that good on the inside, why did they tear the roof off it? And why did they build that structure there? Right? They tore all that off. That's where the core was still, and that's where the building was too. Now this, that core, that reactor was still running. That wasn't a cold shutdown. It blew up and caught fire. This was a major detonation. This was massive. This was elements and parts of the fuel rods being blasted all over the site and all over that. All of that is full of fuel pellets and rods. You can't get in there and walk around without sacrificing yourself. You'll die shortly after, if not right away. You can die if there's a fuel rod there the size of a banana and you walk past it, you won't make it out of the building. You're dead. And if you do make it out, you'll be dead within days, at best two weeks later. You are dead. Once you've got to expose any kind of neutrons and x-rays from this stuff here. I know people will come out and ninny me. I can't cover everything in a little video. Every angle. So people will find ways to ninny me. But you go check out anything I'm saying. And you find something wrong with what I'm saying. Tell me and that will make me stronger. But don't come in and bullshit me. Because I will go check it out. And if you bullshit me I'm just going to block you and delete you. And forget about you. You don't exist. I haven't got time for the games, like these games you're looking at here. They can't get inside of Chernobyl, but yet they're showing you people, they say, are inside of Unit 4. But didn't you see Unit 4? Look at it. They tore the roof off it. There is no fuel pool in the building. There's nothing down there, only infrastructure, but it all blew up and the radioactive material was washed down on top of that. They never went inside of that. You can't get in there. This was all done with cranes and homeless sacrifice, throwing away to die. So it's all a big fable. That ain't real. I mean, you can't have a perfect building, symmetrical building with no damage whatsoever in the roof. Look at it. Inside of that building. It doesn't work that way. That building is a massive building designed to contain a nuclear reactor and detonations. And it didn't. So how could anything survive in there? It can't. Once again, it's so important, that, that law, that I expose that all the time, that I don't forget. E equals mc squared. These elements created by a reactor are not created by the sun. You won't find them on the moon. They're man-made. That's why they're so dangerous. They're not like potato chips, which is what they tell you. They're not like bananas. They're not like the potassium-40 in your drinking water. They're not like uranium that's in a rock. It never went through a chain reaction. It's not like walking in sunshine. It's not like dental x-rays. Not like, you know, cosmic radiation sunshine. You can't get that on, none of that on a Geiger counter. It's not like the radiation from getting on a plane. You get more radiation. It's not man-made radiation. It is now, but it wasn't man-made radia man radiation they're talking about. They're talking about you go up higher and you get more radiation. Somehow radiation doesn't make it down to the earth. It only makes it up high in the sky is what they're trying to tell you. Just another fable. And anything he's getting on the Geiger counter is man-made. He's not going to pick up bananas or potato chips or drinking water or rocks with that Geiger counter. No. And this is what they like to do. They like to show you a picture of a Geiger counter and say everything got radiation in it. But that's normal radiation. There's 260 normal emitters on the planet. 
and thousands of man-made ones. And the normal ones like this stuff can't hurt you. Everything on the planet is acclimated through genetic superior selection through millenniums. But the man-made stuff, nothing has ever encountered it before, and nothing can live in proximity of it. And that's why we have nuclear waste sites and terrorist laws. That's why we have all kinds of safety measures about these nuclear plants that none of them work. They all hemorrhage into the community. The, the ocean current is actually real. In 44 days, that'll cross. At, 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 you know, the corrosion current comes straight across at five miles per hour, right across that freaking ocean. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Less than two months, it's banging your coastline. If it was a single plume, it would do that. But it's a plume all the time, non-stop, for four years, and it ain't gonna stop anytime soon. Because we won't try. Because we're lied to and manipulated so much because people don't understand the things I'm saying. And because there's no critical mass awakening. Because people can't wrap their mind around it. That's why I have to come out with all these videos all the time to try to make sure there's a a recent video with the narrative into it so people can get a handle on it. The jet streams and the ocean currents are real. They really truly are. Radiation in the Pacific Ocean, this model based up on cesium-137 just for a couple of days from a single reactor. Not the ongoing constant endless releases, not all the elements. The, the, you know, the 1200 that they allude to right here that's never put in those models. These models, at best, will only have one or two elements. That's all they got, two elements, cesium and iodine. But it doesn't include the strontium that we know about 100 times more, and it doesn't include all the iodine elements. Once again, you know, I do this over and over to people, and I know, but it's important that everybody is able to, to drill this into their friends, their families, their neighbors, or anybody else to come in contact with. So the idea is to get everybody to the point where this they get bored a little bit with this knowledge because they understand it so well, they heard it so many times. Then you're a real hound. You're a Fukushima hound at that stage. You're the hounds of Fukushima. And you're able to deal with a conversation and beat down stupid opposition that doesn't mention the 1200 radionuclides and fall for all the local nonsense that is fed to them by the mainstream media, which are disgusting maggots, which are an absolute disgusting blight upon this planet. And their future is very, 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 very rocky. The, the world is waking up and is going to hate their guts forever. Because what they say is in the videos, and they are not going to go away. What they say is in those stories that they write, and they say that there's nothing wrong everything is fine and that the government that people like me are the problem scaring people I'm not scaring anybody I'm educating you on what's really going on how is that scaring people when you empower them and they can make rational decisions based upon real information instead of that fable that is fed to them by the system endlessly I'm heading back out on the coastline there's nothing out there I'm not going to be going home. I don't have that in me. I came all this way. We, we done all that work. We put this operation together. And just because I'm in agony and miserable and on a tiny budget doesn't mean I'm going to give it up. Doesn't mean I'm going to walk, no pun intended, I walk away. Doesn't mean that there's anything going to drive me off this trail. We got to get this done. We got to bring this information forward. We're it. We got to do it. It's. Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima. And the Hounds of Fukushima are people that are concerned and just want to have a real debate. And that's bloody well what we're going to be bringing them. I don't care what it takes and how much this destroys me because the future has no future unless we get the truth out there and try. At least we tried. We're bloody well going to try and keep trying and we won't stop for anybody at any time in the future. And just because once in a while I get miserable and I'm in agony and I'm soaking wet doesn't mean that you know I'm demoralized and I'm going to give it all up. It just means that I need a day or two to get back on track. You know, if I was to head down right now, I would turn around and come back. I don't have it in me to go home until the trip is over. That's the problem. 
just with me. I might say different sometimes. I can't do it anymore. I'm hurting too much. I'm busted up. I'm cramped up. But that's not me. That's not my personality. My personality is to get the job done. And I should make sure people understand that about me. You might hear me sometimes say I can't do it anymore, but that doesn't mean I'm going to give it up. The next day I'll wake up. You won't hear that very often, but me saying stuff like that. But it was only because I was in so much agony the last time. But my shoulder's coming around, and I'll persevere. This job will get done. And when I say at all costs, I think we've already done that one. But it's going to get done, no matter what the cost to my personal health or whatever it takes. That's the way I feel. That's what we've done so far, and that's what we're going to continue to do. And I can only get out there when the weather is decent. I can't get out there in bad weather, so I might have to sit at a wharf in little tiny communities for a week or two weeks, taking a beating just to get three or four days of data. But it's worth it. There's no way I would do this unless it was worth it. And it's worth it. We're, we'll get that data. we just never seen storm after storm like we've seen since I got here. That's the most unusual thing imaginable. Anyway, I'm rambling at this stage. Hugs for everybody. Don't lose the fate. Don't lose the drive. Don't lose the energy. Don't lose the momentum. Don't at all costs. you got to stand up tall. Take it on the shoulder when you got to take it and then continue on we're it it's on our watch it's our responsibility and we're bloody well doing the right thing don't let anybody tell you any different hugs for everybody take care folks